Welcome back to What Are Tea Noobs for General Disturbance. This is the M53 M55, the Tier 9 American SPG, located on the Assault Team on Ghost Town Assault, and it's under the command of Talon 1958 of Olymp. And yes, he's still trying to get the weekend lion from Angelina 75, and currently she is in the lead, so he needs to do something. Game on! Well, the M55 was developed from the uh, M53. The prototype came out in 1952, based on the M47 pattern tank, but with the engine at the front instead of at the rear. A torsion bar suspension, a 12 cylinder, four cycle V series uh, or V type engine with 80 horse, um, 810 horsepower at 2800 revs. So it was a bit of a heady mover, you might say. It did have a lot of horsepower for an RT, um, but then it was carrying a very, very heavy weight. 856 horsepower, according to my notes. But um, anyway, the howitzer is capable of 900 alpha, and it'll penetrate through 52 millimeters of armor with 10.5 meters burst radius. He's found a couple of targets, and the good ones at that, a T30, or a pair of T30s actually, rounds out. Direct hit! Oh, he hit one of them. Good shot for the first one, but he has to move because the enemy RT might be doing counter battery. And we've also noted a couple of enemy tanks are actually making their way up the south end of the map, trying to get on top of the hill. We've got some guys up there who are blocking them at the moment from doing that. But uh, in fact, actually, they're blocking our guys from moving down. 50 TP in the town center. Unfortunately, those buildings do very much get in the way. Okay, he's dialing in. Got a target. Skoda T56. Might hit the building if he doesn't get it fully dialed in. Rounds out. Looks good. Direct hit. Right on the money. 339. Didn't pen, but it is a good shot. Now, this RT was used between 1952 and 1960. It had a crew of six, but they did have supporting trucks because they couldn't carry a whole lot of ammunition in this thing. Uh, in fact, very few rounds. It only carried 10 rounds when it was in the M55 uh, configuration with the 8-inch uh, howitzer. So it had to uh, have support vehicles to carry the rest. Rounds out. Oh, well, it overshot the Skoda, but it actually landed nearer to the 56 TP who was behind him. They both took damage, and they both got stunned, and he's picking up stun assist already. Now, it was used by the USA, by Belgium, Turkey, Spain, West Germany, Republic of China, Taiwan, of course, and, well, it didn't gain acceptance widely through the rest of NATO, mainly because the French wanted to build their own RT, and the British at that time were undecided. You can see the 56 TP pushing the wreck of the Skoda along, um, and now two enemy tanks went down. He picked up more stun assist off the Lerva this time. 380 hit points off that shot on the 56 TP. And yeah, it's not a good move, actually. When you, when you have wrecks like that, I know he's trying to get damage, so he's pushing the wrecks forward to get an angle on the enemy. But if you've got RT hitting you, you really shouldn't try to push a bad position because you're likely to get struck. You can see he's got numerous hits all over his body. Rounds out. Lands behind him. Only nine hit points of splash. He's going to have to change position again. Now, the enemy hasn't made any way forward on the south route. You can see that loads of uh, marks of uh, achievement on the side of the vehicle and the front. Looking towards that position, we can't see the 56 TP anymore. Looks like he has given up on that spot, and good thing too for him. But uh, bad for us, because we now haven't got a target to fire at there. We're looking around. I should make a note, actually, just so the uh, viewers, I am trying to increase the volume on my setup so that you can actually hear my voice. Um, somebody's, uh, well, two people actually commented on one of the recent videos that they have to turn their uh, volume on their YouTube um, up a long way to hear me. And when they do, and the, video, and the adverts come on, <laughs> it's kind of deafening. So I will do what I can. I'm testing with this one. I've increased the volume slightly, and I don't want to blow your ears out with the first attempt. 
but I will try to increase the volume so you can actually hear what I'm saying. I do understand that I don't want to um, decrease the amount of volume from the sound effects either. Because I'm, I'm fearful that if I actually increase my own voice, then you won't hear what's going on. You won't hear the voices of the crews. T-30, rounds out. It landed short, but uh, it was a valid shot. Only 163 hit points of damage, but I'm hopeful there might be some stances. Nope, didn't get anything, unfortunately. We do have teammates in that general area. Now, what he's doing here is... Um, Something that a lot of what RT Noobs players have learned to do, um, far more than ordinary RT players or everyday RT players. They use their W key. Yes, they move forwards and they move around the map to actually get better angles than the enemy. And sometimes this can be very, very important and actually produce some phenomenal results, especially when you suddenly meet an enemy tank face to face and shotgun them at close range. They just don't understand that RT can do this even though they may have seen Steve Walsh doing it himself on his uh, on his gaming channel. Of course, he does it for the comedy effect. That that's what he's doing for. He's not doing it because he actually wants to win. He just wants the comedy. But the fact of the matter is, Artie can win games by moving about the map. And sometimes it can provide an enormous shock to the enemy to suddenly have uh, an Artie confront them face to face with an 18 chancer because it kind of ruins their day. Well, he's into the cap circle and he's quite happily sitting here capping with three. Not the only one. And they've still got plenty of time left before the end of the game. Oh, one, two have left the cap. He's the only one in the cap. Up, oh, we've got another joiner. Now, we're only, we're three tanks down on the enemy, so they are doing well in terms of defending the cap area and we've got to watch out for that brass who suddenly appeared oh that's a kill shot what a shot he did get seen but oh my gummy nuked that brass so much force the guy went down before he even knew what hit him and he's gonna cap out to win he's done it he's done it he's capped out to win the game arty wins Well, that was a really excellent end to the game. Talon 1958 in the M53, M55 managed to get a third class tanker in the game, as well as a bruiser mill for getting at least five critical hits. In this one, he managed to get six. Uh, well, at least I think that's a six. My eyesight is getting worse and yeah, I'm getting decrepit. Actually, it's five. Um, <laughs> yes, just goes to show I need to wear my glasses more often. His win eight from the game was 2,416, but sadly this is not enough to beat Angelina because she managed to get a first class bruiser and a confederate virtually straight off the mark on the start of the competition at the beginning of the week. And so she set a very high standard. In fact, Angelina is setting a very high standard virtually all the time now, which makes it increasingly difficult for Talon to win the competition. In fact, I think it's now three weeks or four weeks that Angelina's won the competition and she's getting used to her weekend lines. So Talon needs to pull his finger out and get something done. Um, and just needs to get a good win, actually. Sometimes you've just got to use the W key to get a win. Yes, he's absolutely right. Sometimes if you move about the map, you can actually get a win. And he got the win for his team here because he not only uh, got into that camp, um, in a very bad situation where there were three down, where it looked like they were going to lose because they were running out of time. But he forced the issue and got into the cap and got them the win by sitting in a very unusual position. Well, it's not unusual, but it's a good position for an RT to be. And uh, he started the cap going. But I think the best move of all was taking out that enemy Barask, who was obviously coming in to try and get a reset to find out what was going on. And suddenly he just got nuked out of nowhere by an 18 shell, which went right through him. That must have been a penetrating shot. It was 534 hit points lost in just one shot. And it was a well-aimed shot. He just led the target a little. And as soon as the guy moved through the spot, fired the shell in and bang, got a kill. Let's have a look at team score. Well, we can see in this game that the highest damage in the game actually went to the T30 on the enemy team. He managed to get 4,332 hit points of damage. 
Second highest damage went to the T10 on our team with 3,269. And the third highest damage was the T30, other T30 on the enemy team with 3,100. Uh, Talon managed to get 2,264s, which is a respectable score. And if you look at the uh, score list, you can see three members of the enemy team managed to get above him and three of his own, which means he's in seventh place when it comes to damage. When it came to kills, it was the T30 on the enemy team did the best with three kills. Two kills went to the T10 and Scorpion on his own team and the ISU 152 on the enemy team. Talon only got the one kill, but it was a good one. And when it came to base XP, he's in third place because the T10 managed 1,017. He's the only one to get over 1,000 base in the game. 866 went to the Skoda T56 and 748 went to Talon for procuring that win for his teammates. He fired eight rounds, got five direct hits on the enemy, one penetrating shot, who we know that was the Barask, 10 splash, so he was hitting more than one target at the same time with these shells, 2,264 hit points, of which 1,730 were at more than 300 meters. So most of the damage done at long range, but that shot, the single shot on the Barask, actually was the close range hit. Five enemy vehicles were damaged, one was killed, 594 hit points of stun assist off 10 stuns, and he got 67 capture points, so he came very close to getting an invader medal as well. On a premium count, he earned 70,929 credits for the game, and he also took away 2,244 experience points as well, but unfortunately that means Angelina is still in the lead. And yes, Talon's going to have to uh, come up with something better uh, before the weekend ends, uh, he's he could get an ace tanker. I think, I think it's possible. I've seen him do ace tankers, and he's pulled them out of nowhere. Uh, but he's going to have to find something because Angelina's walking away with it most of the time these days. And so we're all rooting for talent to get a good game. If you enjoyed that replay, please give this video a like. Do subscribe to our channel. Leave a little comment down below because it feeds the algorithm. Do let us know our sound noise if it's okay. Uh, if there's too much engine noise or too much me noise, too much commentary. Um, and thank you for watching.